Well, it has, um, it has happened. We are on and, uh, we're going to play a, uh, we're going to play the, uh, the open, the, you know, the real open for the, as though we were doing a show. Can we do that? And then we can start. I really, but right, that, now everybody, thank you. That'd be good. Quiet. Listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before, you know, it's going to be a tough grind, but we're going to have a show. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All right, now. It is great to have everyone here. It is a, um, there's a, uh, there's a somberness about, uh, honestly, about uh, some of what's happening, of course. There's also a sense maybe of potential as to what might happen. Really excited to have so many uh, talented people joining us. And I'm talking about uh, the other hosts on KGO and producers on KGO. We've invited a bunch of people to join and hopefully... Uh, that will, um, I think, populate this couple of hours with uh, conversation and uh, reaction and impressions and thoughts and even views toward the future that we can um, that we can use as we kind of process this. KGO is such a, I mean, it's a legendary radio station, you know, such a big part of things. So I'll um, I'll walk you through what happened on my end um, in in a little while. But first, I want to welcome all of you to Twitter spaces. I haven't really used Twitter spaces a lot as a, you know, someone who is a host. So I've invited my darling Courtney, who is a, a true a web three ninja and Twitter space experience soul to uh, there. You, she's waving. Now you can see the way it, it, those of you who are new to Twitter spaces, there are, I think uh, ways you can, you can heart things. You can also comment, you can even tweet, and we can post those tweets to this conversation and discussion. But uh, fabulous producer John Daly is here, which is cool. Fabulous and I producer think, John, uh, Daly. John Rothman has joined. Pat Thurston, Kim, Nikki, you can see, is on board. Chris Merrill, Gary Dietrich, Clark Reed. Uh, these are all people who you know from KGO through the years and who've all been affected by this dramatic change. I guess... I haven't heard the station yet today, but today was the debut of the new format, which is a sports gambling format. It'll be a mix from what I'm told. Uh, And I'm just literally, you know, I'm reading published reports. I don't really have any inside scoop, although John Daly seemed to have a sense of, uh, you know, he'd also kind of just been sifting through the various things that we'd heard and mentioned, had a sense of it, that it was going to be, um, wasn't it, John? It was going to be... uh, it's gaming mixed with sports was the, um, was the sense I had. Right. So you're hearing straight sports shows and you're also going to hear a lot about, you know, how to make money betting on sports. Yeah. There is a, uh, I believe sponsorships like MGM and, uh, uh, draft Kings probably, you know, these are sort of the, uh, these are the sponsors that essentially have, uh, uh made a deal and are buying up uh, stations and time on stations around the country. But KGO is a legendary station that has always had, as you know, at its core, uh, a sense of community and talk about events that affect the community and the world at large. It's never really been, you know, this kind of thing. I mean, this is uh, a true radical Titanic format change. And so it's with that that we begin. So let me welcome in other uh, voices here. And we, uh, in so doing, can kind of process this and uh, talk about what's ahead. Um, how does this work, Courtney? Do I, uh, does anybody, do they have to uh, ask, ask if they, if want, they to want to speak or how does it work? Yeah. Okay. So, so John, Pat, Kim, uh, they can just unmute and then they can speak. Okay. So that's Hi, how. Uh, there is Kim. Okay, good. One of the yeah. things that, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of, of the comments over the last couple of days has been, why didn't they even give you guys a chance to say goodbye? 
And I, I just want people to know that that's not really the way it works in radio. And while it sucks that we, it was awkward and strange and the way it all passed through is that, you know, they don't, they don't radio is kind of this fickle business where that's the way it, it is. So it's really nice today to have a chance to say goodbye to the people that have helped to make KGO what it was over the years, and that's the listeners. Mark, if, if I can, this is Pat. Um, I'd like you to talk about what happened. You were on the air. The rest of us were in the conference room, and I don't really know. I haven't heard from you or from anybody else what transpired when they suddenly took you off the air, because that also, the abruptness of that, seems to have offended a whole lot of people, me included. Yeah, I will tell you exactly what happened. And I was, I think I mentioned this to uh, some journalist, I think who, I shouldn't say, you know, somebody who was good enough to, to ask about it and has covered this event. But it was a weird uh, thing. I had no sense of what was going to happen. Like anybody else, we had planned a regular show. Uh, but the night before, I think, or John, when was the, there was some memo saying everybody should be in. And we were all worried that it was going to be another round of cuts or, you know, either there was going to be another round of personnel cuts, although there were not a whole lot of people left. And so we were concerned that something big was going to happen. We had no, in fact, we really didn't, I think we jokingly checked off like in, you know, sort of the gallows humor way that maybe, you know, we won't be around, you know, at the end of the week or something like that. But we didn't, I don't think really have a sense that that was a likely uh, possibility. We'd heard no rumblings, at least I hadn't. So let me tell you then uh, what happened oddly. I got a call right before I went on and it was with the uh, two top guys at KGO. And I said, because they were both on the line, and I mean, they've never called me with both of them on the line before. I said, oh no, what's going on? And they said, yeah, it's a sad day. And I think it was a sad day for them. Like, I don't think they were excited about doing this, but anyway, they said, uh, we are going to, uh, KGO has changed something to this effect. I mean, now I'm paraphrasing, but, um, you know, where KGO is going away or KGO is changing the format and we need you, this is right before I, I went on. We need you to do your show as normal, but then at 10 15, we're going to change form. You're going to give a legal ID and then, uh, you're done. And I said, well, don't you want to acknowledge this change and say goodbye to the audience? I mean, I think at minimum we should do that. And they said, no, we need you just to do your show as normal and make no reference to it. And then at a quarter after you'll give a legal ID and you'll be done. And KGO will make the change. And then I asked, well, what is the change? What are you guys doing? And they mentioned it was a sports gaming type mixture. And then I said, well, guys, we've been, we've been who we are for so long. Don't you think we need to, it, it, it would be, I, I can even spin it positively. I was kind of pleading with them. I can spin it positively. I'll say, Hey, there's an exciting new format. I'll try to, please let me say goodbye to the audience. I, I think, we owe it to the audience. And it, this is a uh, station that has meant so much to the audience, even if the audience is diminished. I remember saying that, and maybe a small A on audience now, like it's not what it was, but these are devoted listeners. And then as almost as though they were reading from a hymnal, they said, you will go on the air, do your regular show, and that at a quarter after you'll, and that's when I realized they're getting that order from corporate because they just wouldn't engage at all on saying goodbye. And I thought it was, and, and I, I thought it was a massive mistake, you know? Uh, and I, but again, I think it was a mistake that came down from on high above them is the way I got it because they were so, uh, they kept defaulting to this kind of instruction that I was, it was almost like listening to a hostage read one of those statements in a video, you know? And, um, 
It was bizarre. And then I went on. I mean, it, it had, the whole thing happened like minutes before I went on. And we went on and boom, it just happened. And I was in a daze. I, re- I don't even remember what, what I talked about. I was so overwhelmed. Uh, but that's exactly what happened, Pat. You know, it, it went down exactly like that. So it's um, awful. It's yeah. awful that they yeah. made you do that. And to Kim's point, generally in this business, they don't give you the opportunity to say goodbye. But they told you about the format change, still made you take the air, and didn't allow you the opportunity to be honest with the audience and to do some sort of a goodbye. And I agree with you that Lee Hammer and um, Larry Bloomhagen Hagen are bosses that they were stunned and um, disappointed and heartbroken. I'm not going to say as much as we were, because obviously we were more affected, but they were. It's This is this is something that came from corporate. This is not something that they were behind. Um, but it is, it's terrible. It's, it's heartbreaking for two reasons, because nobody wants to lose their job. You know, it's great fun to host a talk radio show, but also because KGO is an iconic station that has, you know, been around for so long. It's a legacy radio station. And, you know, we were doing responsible, good broadcasting for the Bay Area. The decisions that were made by corporate leading up to this, when they first took over, you know, Cumulus took over, the, you know, when they started making decisions to change the format, then change it again, then change it another time, make it a hybrid, and, you know, the, um, trying to attack, attract women with the seven Fs, you know, bizarre decisions that they were making that were losing us listeners over and over and over again. And when they finally got back to our legacy, let's go back to talk radio, then they didn't do it 24-7 like we were. It was condensed. And they and even with that, they were um, cutting people, cutting resources constantly. There was no marketing. There was nothing that indicated that they wanted KGO to really succeed in the old format. And we were building listenership. And I just, you know, I'm so sad about the entire way that this happened. And I told the um, HR person, you know, when I had my little exit interview, I told, I, I said that I really appreciated working with Larry and with Lee. And I did that, you know, you know how wonderful KGO was. And that I believe that Cumulus set us up to fail, you know, when they finally took us back to that format. And I stand by that. There's one thing I would just add to this mix, and then I will will step back again. And that is that what we're seeing and what we saw in KGO with what happened is the culmination of something that happened and began in the mid nineties on one level and also has happened just in general with technologies changing. What happened in the mid nineties was the, decision uh, on the part of uh, America to allow the, I'm talking about the legislative uh, parts of America. Clinton was in office. I mean, I don't want to get too political, but I, that's kind of why I was avoiding it. But um, it allowed for the ownership of all of these radio stations and newspapers, et cetera, by single entities. So one corporate entity can own all of these different broadcast outlets or newspapers, et cetera. In other words, all these information sources. So from the standpoint of democracy, I always thought it was bad because you're losing any kind of plurality about that information, right? About different points of view, et cetera. But the other thing that happens is you end up like this with remote ownership and they make decisions about the things going on and they just look at profit, profit and loss. They don't look at the market particularly. And you know, the texture of the community is lost and all of that as well. That's what happened in, from a legislative point, point, uh, standpoint in the nineties. But the other thing that's happened is look, radio and all broadcast is succumbing on some level to the fact that ad supported media is being pounded by digital. And so there's so many other streaming platforms and podcasts among them, perhaps when it comes to radio that make it a little bit harder. And so on the AM band, it's been a tough slog, but there are success stories. And I believe KGO could have been that success story if we had hacked a little bit this way, a little bit that way, made some decisions along the way. But as Pat was saying, it's kind of been death by a thousand cuts. We have really uh, seen the station go through so many changes and they've shaken out. There've been some really good pieces written about this in the Chronicle and SF gate, et cetera, and how they 
they sh have shaken out audience along the way. And you, at some point you're shaking for so long that it's very hard to get that audience back because they've, they've left your station. They've left your, your frequency. So I think all of those things contributed to the environment that we found ourselves in and the format change. Did you want to say something, Nikki? Did you have something? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just I, I just think, you know, as we're reflecting on that day last week when we all, you know, got the notices and we were brought into the conference room, I think that the thing that was just so disappointing and we kept, you know, Kim and, and a bunch of us were, <laughs> you know, drowning our sorrows right after and we're saying was we just wanted some more time. I think that that was the thing, like Pat was alluding to, even though they didn't go all in, right? We weren't 24 hours uh, the overnight, the guy that came on after John Rothman was just completely different than everything on KGO. But, you know, I know in the morning, and I'm sure all the hosts would say this, if we just had more time, if they would have invested just a little bit in advertising and in marketing, but the fact that they gave us this show, they cut all of our resources. I mean, if you could have seen the amazing work that was put out with the bare bones crew that we had, you'd be amazed. And if they would have just put a little bit of money into it and believed in us, as much as I see all of our listeners believed in KGO, I really do think we could have been successful. But the truth of the matter is, and I think we're learning more and more, they didn't believe in us. I think they were just, you know, delaying the inevitable, making it seem like we had a chance, making it seem like put all of your heart and soul into something and we believe in you. And I'm sorry, I'm a little bitter by it, but I think it was all BS. So while on one hand, I and this is what I said when, you know, that day uh, came, I, I, I thanked our bosses for the opportunity. They made a dream come true for me. I'm just so angry and hurt and disappointed that we just really weren't given a fair shot to make something of that show and and to bring KGO back to what it was, or at least uh, as much as we could be with all of the competition with streaming and podcasting and digital, like you were talking about, Mark. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it's a really tough time right now. And I did tune in and I, I just don't get it. I really just don't get what they've turned KGO into. I don't. From a money standpoint, I get it. I, I, if, because they were, again, this is, goes back to the corporatocracy that, has, that is running media. And I don't want to, you know, I read this stuff too that uh, I sounded, I was going to say, I sound so woke when I say that or whatever, but, and I'm seeing this stuff on Twitter. This is so wrong. Everybody goes, well, go woke, go broke, dude. Yeah, you guys were too woke. Uh, that's got nothing to do with it. This is pure money. It has nothing to do with woke. It doesn't, we could be right wing, left wing, whatever. The reality is that a corporate entity, in this case, it was Cumulus. It could have been any corporate entity. They look at the P&L, they look at what they're spending, and they go, look, we let go of all of these hosts, we let go of all these producers, engineers, I have no doubt that eventually they'll probably go completely automated. And you'll end up with syndicated shows we pay a dollar for, but we'll make a dollar fifty. Sure, we don't have huge upside, but they might even have a piece of the DraftKings MGM betting part. I mean, there, there may actually be a deal that allows them to share in that. I don't know if they have a profit share on the gambling as well. But there's a whole aspect to this that has nothing to do with politics or people. It's just money. And that's the problem to refer back to that, that uh, Telco Act of 1996, which allowed these corporate entities to buy up all these stations. Because then we just become dollars and cents. And there's no sense of what you're talking about, Nikki, which is a relationship with the community that takes time to build. You know? Well, it used to be that our, our licenses were really dependent upon us providing a community service. I recall, and Mark, I don't think you ever got to know this jerk, uh, Randall Bloomquist, um, who was a, a corporate muckety-muck. And then he, when Kevin Matheny died at his desk and he came in um, and assumed the role of program director, he was a rat bastard. And I don't mind saying that. I've said that on the air before. This guy, little, Pat. Yeah, well, he told me once, and I'm not sure if he said this in a, in a full meeting, but he told me that what they were 
considering doing because we were on an AM band was to use that band simply for infomercials because we were making so much money from the infomercials on the weekend. They had no real, just to your point, Mark, they had no sense of the importance to the community of having this kind of programming, which was unique. There's no other radio station that does what we were doing. And one other point, the Telecommunications Act of 1996 really was bad. I uh, had the privilege of interviewing Walter Cronkite on a number of occasions, and it was something that absolutely horrified him. He was concerned, of course, not about news talk, but about news. And he said that it's one of the worst things that could possibly have happened to the United States of America and our ability to provide news to our communities, particularly local news, because it was just going to be killed by no competition, no differentiation in the terms of the stories that were being covered. It wasn't long after the Telecommunications Act where newspapers, for example, uh, closed all of their foreign bureaus. Of course, they were having problems with revenue also because uh, of um, the um, advertisements, um, you know, that, 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 Craigslist took over. So yeah, uh, tech has played a number on all of us, but it didn't mean that it had to kill everything because there was still a great opportunity and um, a need for radio and for local newspapers that were actually doing local things for locally based, you know, local centric, although that doesn't mean that we ignore the the broader scope of things that people in our local um, communities also care very much about. I think that's very well said. You know, the, the Telco Act, I think, is the undoing in, in large. It's, it's a, an odd thing. By the way, interesting that that rumor about Pat and Walter Cronkite uh, maybe hanging out together too many times is uh, maybe uh, uh, gets new life. What? Yeah, I'm just saying. Pat referenced that she interviewed Walter Cronkite many times. Could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Hush, hush now, Mark. That was, uh, that was in. I, it was I purely professional. That I shared pure, that with you. <laughs> I, I will say, um, uh, did, did Rothman want to say something too? I see John in the. I'm, um, I'm, in I'm right here and I'm listening attentively. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm very disappointed. Uh, KGO was more than a legacy radio station, as we demonstrated during our tenure. Uh, it was the place for people to go to talk. And. Now the tragedy, I know we all lost our jobs, but the real tragedy and the uh, over a thousand emails I've received from people is there's no local community forum. There is no alternative to what KGO provided. And that to me is the most important thing. Here we have a major catastrophe taking place in Ukraine. We have Donald Trump speaking by Zoom or however he did it to a far right rally in Europe. We have uh, the elections coming up in just two weeks, three weeks, and we're not there. And that's what people are going to miss. And frankly, that's what I'm going to miss. Uh, let me just be clear so that everyone understands. I had no prior knowledge. Uh, I was actually, it was Yom Kippur when the uh, notice went out and I wasn't checking any emails. Uh, the next morning, I was teaching a class at the Fromm Institute. And uh, all of a sudden, my phone started ringing off the hook around uh, 1030 when the word went out. And when I tried to call down to KGO after my class was over at about 1130, nobody picked up the phone. So we got in the car and drove down to KGO and found out what was going on. Uh, let me make one other quick comment. I don't want to talk too much, but I want to be very clear. This is precisely what radio does. This is what happened to us uh, exactly 11 years ago on KGO, where we were all just called in and told, that's it, no chance to say goodbye. The question we have to pose as a community and, frankly, as the talent is whether or not there is an alternative. Is there something we all can do, if not to bring back KGO, which is now sadly gone, but to bring back that community bull board? Is there another radio station that will pick us up? Is there uh, something that we can do that really makes a difference? And I'm looking now, what do we have, two or three hundred people on this particular link? Uh, but we have to think about that and the community has to think about it. So those are my quick observations uh, and uh, and I'll listen and if need be, I'm happy to continue to participate. 
Well, it's interesting too that uh, this is something that I'm hearing on. Oh wait, wait, your Mark, scene. Mark. Just so you know, yeah. my wife just told me it's now over 700, close to 800 people no, participating. Close to 700. Oh, close yeah, to. It's 700. a really great. It's a really great turnout. Um, apropos of that, um, I ask you, executive producer John Daly, why we never got a thousand emails on anything. I, I, said, you know, I don't Daly. know. Uh, I can't remember every. You know. Rothman goes off the air. He gets a thousand emails. I'm just, I've received a lot of positive. I letters. get. Am I right, John? I don't think we ever got a thousand emails. But um, uh, look, there has been a tremendous outpouring of support and questions. And what I was going to say is, to John's point, there's been sort of this ongoing suggestion on Twitter and in emails and communications of one sort or another. Like, why don't you all go to fill in the blank? You know. Uh, KCBS was suggested or uh, KSFO or why don't they bring you all to um, going to another platform might be uh, a practical alternative. It's something that I've looked into. I've looked at a YouTube uh, platform, at least at, in the short term. And I'll post a link on that and maybe we can get something going there. I'd love to. Mark, uh, that, can, I, yeah. Mark can I just point out when this happened 11 years ago, all of us, all of us went over to 910, which was then trying to recreate KGO. It did not work. It failed. Uh, we also had Ed Baxter, Rosie Allen, a group of the old veteran KGO people. We put together a podcast uh, around the world with John Rothman was one of the features. I did it for six months. Uh, we were never paid for it. I just did two or three short things each day. Uh, and ultimately, Ed Baxter pulled the plug because it wasn't working. We, if we're going to find a forum, if we're going to work together, we need to find a way where together we go into this thing and we go in whole hog. And one thing that I observed is that radio is easy. To turn on KGO meant you just hit the dial and bingo, you were right there. To go on Twitter or to uh, do another vehicle of that sort is more complicated, particularly, and I don't mean to insult any of our listeners, for our listeners, many of whom are not necessarily computer literate. I include myself in that number. In order to do this particular, uh, participate in this particular broadcast, I had asked Mark what to do and he wasn't quite sure. So <laughs> this is the thing we have to consider, but I'm happy to cooperate and work with, because believe me, the last thing my wife wants is me wandering around the house, lecturing her. <laughs> and, and let me also say, guys, I think the thing that we really need to figure out, and I'm sure that many of the people listening right now are thinking the same thing, is how do we make it work? How do we all do it, you know, either together or maybe each have our own you know, kind of segments? But the thing that I miss and the big question mark for me, and I don't know, Mark, if you figured it out, is how do we get the listeners involved? Because that is what I miss the most. And I think from all the thousands of emails, by the way, that I've been receiving, just just to let you know, um, is that people want a place to call in and and interact live with us. It's the live aspect that I don't know. I love this Twitter Spaces. I know that you know it can be recorded and saved for about a month, but um, something like that is what I think a lot of people are hungry for and don't want to miss. And that's the thing that I've been racking my brain that if we don't have terrestrial radio. And we're going to do it on our own and it's going to be our own thing. And we're going to include, you know, digital, YouTube, whatever it may be. How do we get the listeners involved in a way that we still have the same interaction? And if anybody knows, let us know. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because even in looking at the podcasts that would be reasonable alternatives, even a Patreon model where maybe, you know, we could really do it as a job, meaning would there be enough money associated with it that we could we could do it maybe as a side hustle or however. Uh, it doesn't allow us, at least based on what I've been able to see in the primordial ooze of my search over the weekend, it doesn't allow us to interact with the audience the way Nikki is speaking of and, and the way we're used to it. And so I'm, I'm working on that as well. Then the thing I like about the, again, just to run this out for a second, I guess I'm just thinking out loud with the, the other hosts and with you, the KGO community, is the, the thing I like about the YouTube platform potentially is that you can, through the chat forums, you can interact. Now you can't take calls, although I think there are ways to do that as well. That would be a separate technology that you'd have to marry to it. Um, Again, there are probably people listening to this going, dude, it's not that hard. It's you can do this, you can do that. I mean, I, again, we all have different levels of 
technological expertise, but I would suggest that we are looking at ways that would allow us to both have a platform, but also to interact, as Nikki says, with, uh, with so many who, who want to interact with us. Did Gary Dietrich want to say something? Is that what you're saying, Courtney? What? Gary Dietrich, the longtime political voice of, uh, of KGO, he's, you know, been a voice through so many different hosts and iterations of KGO along the way. But um, anyway, he joins in the, in the forum. If anybody wants to um, uh, say something, please let me know. I just see the names of people who are joining. Hi, Clark. Got, and yeah. everybody. This is Clark Reed. Um, hey, Clark. I just wanted to point out that uh, I did a little checking after we uh, went through this trauma the other day. And KGO still had over 200,000 uh, total CUME listeners. And to put that into perspective, there were two other stations that had more on AM and FM, KCBS and uh, KMBR, but they were both simulcast on FM. KGO still had the biggest AM audience in the Bay Area. So a lot of people well, leave just swinging in the breeze when they pull the plug on it. Wow, that's an extraordinary number. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry, it's the old program director in me. I you know, have to dig into the numbers. <laughs> yeah, and well, you know, Clark is a two-time Marconi winner, and I hate to mention this, but it uh, may seem a bit selfish, but I... Uh, I hate that they pulled the plug before I got a chance to get my Marconi award, uh, Clark. You know, I wanted to uh, get into the Marconi hunt with you, you know. I, you know, I, I know that I was am. totally exactly. unfair. I to... I, I'm thinking about, you know, selling NFTs of the picture of the KGO legendary station, uh, Marconi. Uh, because you know, apparently it, people will pay money <laughs> to <laughs> for a copy of a picture of something on the Internet. So I'm going, oh, that's free money. Why not? Podbean and other podcasting platforms have the ability to broadcast live talk shows, says Ray on Twitter. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Instagram Live or Facebook Live. Yeah, maybe. It's a question of interacting, Carlos. Thank you on Twitter. Um, Mark? Yeah. Hi, Gary. I just want to say a real, couple things real quick, if I could, my friend. Please, go ahead. Yeah. So first off, you know, you guys all know how much I have loved being part of KGO. I mean, to your point, Mark, it has been decades. It's hard to believe that, but it's been through a lot of iterations. I miss guys, of course, like Ron Owens and others that we used to be on in the past. But every one of you guys who are our local hosts have just done a spectacular job. And it has really been an honor to work with each of you, to talk with our listeners for so many years. And to John's point, I, I think there's something you know, that I know I'm going to miss both both as a broadcaster and as a native Northern Californian. You know, I think back what sticks out of my mind right now, guys, everybody would, of course, say the election cycles and all. Certainly, I think we've done a tremendous service providing people objective, helpful information. But I think back to the fires. I think back to John and Pat and you, Mark, and Nikki, just nonstop, wall to wall, people calling in from Sonoma and Napa. Remember that? Just hour after hour, providing helpful information in real time that was not provided elsewhere. I think that, to me, is one of the things that we are really going to miss. Now, let me say just a word about the format change, because I thought about this some over the weekend. Some of you may know, and I think the timing of this is exceptionally interesting, that we have two ballot measures right now on online gaming that are the most expensive ballot measures in our state's history, a combined over $400 million being spent on advertising for Prop 26 and 27. And it's not lost on me that finding platforms to actualize that and push people onto those gaming platforms, as we like to say in the broadcast biz, I, I, I just find it amazingly coincidental the, the only problem for those folks right now is polls show both of those propositions now going down to defeat. We'll see what happens in four weeks. But there you go, Mark. I just want to thank you guys and certainly, you know, would love to be part of anything going forward, but can't be more grateful for what we've already accomplished. Love you, Gary. We always loved having you. Yeah, on thank you, Gary. I think that that really is a great, great way to frame this because the timing isn't an accident. In fact, you could argue that maybe in some back room at corporate, they were saying, hey, we got to do this fast. We got to do this faster. We're behind schedule because we're trying to push through these propositions. 
Um, it is odd as I think back on it because I've talked about these propositions on the air and I recommended voting no to both. And we've had guests say, you know, no on 26, no on 27 across the board. I mean, uh, but as Gary says, it, you didn't need me or, or any host to tell you that the, it, it, those, both those propositions are flagging in terms of support, but it is uh, not a coincidence that this, uh, uh, the anticipation that gaming and gambling will be legalized in the world of sports. It's already happening across the country. That's a big part of this, but it is a simple dollars and cents decision. Uh, you can default to that logic and you'd be right to default. Hey, Mark, this is uh, I, I, John. I, I think no. we should mention that this plan has been in the works for a while and it was kind of pieced together. Um, Cumulus commissioned research in 2021 and 2022 into sports betting. And Odyssey, our rival company, is uh, owner of the sports betting um, data company. And so it looks like, as I read the industry uh, research on sports betting, it looks like this plan came together sometime in 2021. And I know that they secured the website in August of this year. So um, this has been in the works for a while. Wow. That's, and as usual, good uh, background knowledge from a fabulous producer, fabulous producer John, John Daly. Yeah. Well, that kind uh, of explains why over that period of time, they didn't do anything to help us, that they wouldn't market us. Even when Lee Hammer came up with these really affordable and smart ways to market a KGO to an audience that would be interested in, in joining with us, um, they put the kibosh on that, on everything. They took us down to the bare bones. Uh, people were working more than their own jobs. The jobs that they were hired for, people had multiple jobs put on their shoulders, especially the news people were expected to do four or five jobs at one time. And man, they put okay. up rally. They did it. They did it really well. But why, 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 why? Lee had so many ideas that they just kept saying no to. And so that's one of the reasons that I think we were set up to fail. And I think that um, Lee and Larry, that they were caught flat footed on this as well. They had they had no idea that this is what was going to happen and that this was going to happen when it happened. Yeah, I think that that's really, uh, and, and then I'll shut up, but just real quick, I, I just want to underscore what Pat has just said, because I think local management didn't really have a sense of this. Otherwise, why would they spin their wheels with all of these ideas and uh, different inventive strategies to try to get the word out from the standpoint of promotion, et cetera? It, they just wouldn't have done it. So I think you're right. I think it was going on uh, at, a, at another level, and then it was dropped on them. Yeah, I think there's no question about it. I just want to point out that many of us put in countless hours unpaid, and I want to underline that, unpaid, in order to make sure that we did the best job we could. And that applied not only to some of us as hosts, but it applied to others. I particularly want to point out Karen Reed and Chris Hernandez, whose countless hours, and I think combined service KGO, you added up, was probably about 70 years. Uh, and they're just unceremoniously dismissed. But you're right about Lee uh, and Larry. We gave them a lot of ideas, a lot of input, a lot of support in order to expand our listenership. But I also want to thank Clark Reed for pointing out uh, over 200,000 listeners uh, on a regular basis to KGO. And if I may be so bold again as to say, if you could read the e emails, which I have been receiving uh, from literally all over the world, uh, it brings tears to your eyes. This is a great loss, not for us alone, but for the San Francisco Bay Area community. And uh, I don't know if it can ever be replaced. And that's the real tragedy uh, in all of this. Well, I think that the face of radio and all of these platforms has changed. And it's not going to return to what it was. But as it's been pointed out on Twitter in different communications, and I really appreciate everybody who has interacted with us just generally, but also with suggestions that there are platforms where you can take calls and you can essentially do a lot of the shows that we're used to doing uh, in another forum, in another way. Now, the beauty and accessibility of KGO within our lives around the Bay Area and beyond 
Uh, I don't know that we can replicate that. But on the other hand, sometimes it's not hard to replicate it. I mean, you can, through Bluetooth, you can, you know, log on and get a YouTube show that's going on live, or you can get uh, any number of other platforms that are going down live. So uh, it, it's something to consider. Um, but those of you, I got a, a, another question. I just want to uh, uh, handle this kind of just to double back to the beginning of when this, so somebody said, why didn't you, uh, did you think about torching management when you went on the air? Like to, um, I forget, I'm looking for the uh, tweet now. There were a couple of them. Uh, the answer is I didn't, I didn't. And, I'll, and there are two reasons why. First of all, if you've listened to me, it's just not, it's not my style to go, you know, super rogue and then, you know, self immolate there and, you know, make it because, and, and the other reason is you're on a delay. So how long do you think you're going to be able to get, a, get out with some crap about how awful this is? And, you know, you, you people don't know what you're doing and whatever you're going to try to say, it's just a stupid thing to do, you know? So I, um, believe me, I was, as I've mentioned, I was overwhelmed having gotten the word right before I went on. I had not, I, I, I literally, can't remember what we did. We did the stupidest stuff like the what that we did something which I didn't even I don't even like that. What day it is, you know, like it's National Cinnabon Day or whatever. Now you crap. tell me, Mark. <laughs> yeah. But I uh, but I, but I was so caught that I uh, I producer John David. I blame the producer actually for not uh, <laughs> whoever is producing yeah, this. Thing yeah, I really. Hey, no it was gaining traction. We got a lot of positive letters. <laughs> we got a lot of positive letters. It's true. So uh, uh, one thing Mark I want to mention on that letters. point is uh, yeah. they brought in an outside sound engineer. So our sound engineer was not in control of the broadcast. You would have been cut off. Yeah, that's right. Chris was pulled from the booth. Chris, thank you. So it was somebody else who was in there. When so I looked it, up, yeah. before, when it, I was, was being pulled from the meeting, all the seats were empty. John's seat was empty, and I knew that was it. Yeah, it, it's, a, it, it's really, I mean, even when I think about it, my heart starts beating quickly. It was really intense. It was really brutal, man. Really no, no, no good. And, um, and as I say, I think everybody involved, even the people, local management, Larry and Lee and everyone else, obviously, uh, was heartbroken with it, by, by it as well. I don't think that it was supported by anyone in the building. Well, you and know, they had, they had I, no idea. Mark, this is Clark again. Uh, I was walking by the control room, saw the hotline ringing and I looked at the phone and it's it's our friend Moskowitz calling in to do his commercial. <laughs> so I walked down the hall to see Scotty Bassable, who's the sales manager for the building and who I managed with over at Cheap Channel. And uh, he was in a Zoom meeting. I broke in anyway and said, hey, you need to tell your seller that they've got to call Moskowitz. I said, that's just not cool to treat a big client that way, let alone our listeners or let alone us. That's just not right. And he got on it and had, you know, the seller call him. But the, they had no idea. They were in shell shock, too, over on well, the sales weird, side. There was a weird thing that they were very concerned with no one knowing ahead of anybody else. And I don't they're almost obsessively so. To the but point that's that, the way and, they always are, Mark. I mean, every single blowout, some people would think like, oh, this person knew or that person knew. They never told anyone any time ahead of time that was going to get fired or was working there. But I think the thing that also this illustrates is they didn't trust us. And we proved that we could be trusted. We could be, we proved that we could be trusted to give the information in, in a way that people could understand and was entertaining. And then when push comes to shove, when it was time, you know, to change KGO, they didn't trust the host enough to be professional and classy. And so they went the cheapest, I think, rudest way ever in ending this station by just pulling the plug in the middle of your show. They could have done it, you know, in a way that makes sense at the top of the hour. Honestly, not even let you do what you did, which didn't make any sense to the people that were listening. I just wish they would have trusted us. And, you know, even if it was 10 seconds before just being like, look, that's it. We've been through this. We know what that means. I, I mean, that was the only question I asked in that meeting was, are you not going to let us say goodbye? And, and the answer was no. And it's so disappointing because I think we could have done it in such a classy way or just done it in a way that wasn't so abrupt. This is exactly what I said after the fact. I mean, in the moment, I was scrambling, pleading for them to let me just give me just five seconds. Let me just say there's a new format coming. We have to say goodbye, whatever, please. Uh, but they were 
they were clearly being given orders because they were just not even engaging on this. Uh, and I visited, as I say, with, uh, I said, Hey, I can spend it positively. Trust me. I'm not going to say, you know, I, I really tried, but again, it was all right before I went on. But anyway, uh, you're right. It made no sense. Uh, they should have done a top of the hour or whatever. If you were thinking it out that way, uh, I think the, this is the way it was told, uh, to them, that is the local management, that it was to be done clearly. And you're right. I think what Nikki has just said is right. Again, not local management, but corporate was worried just in general that hosts will go rogue and that callers will start, you know, saying all kinds of things that are inflammatory and rude, et cetera. And I think they were so concerned that again, not so much local management that knows that we're not going to do that. I mean, I, I really believe by now, as Nikki says, they know that, but they're not making the decision as to how the transition goes. Hey, I think it's they really did it after 10 o'clock before. because they were afraid Nikki was going to crack a mic open. You know, <laughs> there is a part of me that was like, maybe they just didn't trust my mouth, but I yeah. swear to yeah. you, if or given Cam. the opportunity, I would have been class. Right. Listen right. to me. I don't want to hear you. Right. Exactly. Don't be or a sucker. Uh, right. Right. You know, it, it doesn't always happen exactly like that. Of course, the 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 big blowout that John was talking about 11 years ago, you know, where the giants of a KGO were all fired in one fell swoop. Some of us part timers like me. Uh, we were remaining. And so I went on and did my show the next day and I didn't avoid talking about it. I opened up the phones. I talked about each of the hosts who were let go, how disappointing it was, um, you know, how much I was going to miss them, the the great things that they had done. And that I opened up the phones and we took listener calls. And the first break I took, I thought I was going to get in trouble. I thought I might, might get fired. The first break I took, the... Uh, manager at that time, uh, I think it was Paul Hosley, uh, he ran into the studio and he said, thank you, keep this up. And I did it, you know, for the full three hours that I was on, we had all of these callers who wanted to vent and we let them vent, who wanted to cry, a lot of them cried, um, who wanted to celebrate the hosts who were gone. It was cathartic. And it was it was wonderful. And I think that the audience was appreciative that we didn't crap on them, you know? Oh, and I think yeah. a big takeaway here is like to reiterate that this was all done by remote control. This is all done from corporate headquarters. So, you know, people were mad at local management. They thought, oh, KGO. It's, it wasn't KGO. It, it was no one involved with KGO. It was no one in the building. Hi, this is Terry. Can you hear me? Hi, Terry Adams, the uh, esteemed producer. Hi, everyone. I'm thinking, given the new information that Clark presented regarding our QM and the thousands of emails that John Rothman has received, Nikki has received, could we put together some type of petition uh, saying that our community wants this? Even we can have some of the advertisers sign the petition. It can be digital and send that to corporate. And maybe they could reconsider maybe having the talk show format during the weekdays and then move the sports betting to the weekends. Do you think that would uh, be something I, I, to work I just, out? I just hate to say it, but I think this cake is baked and this goes back to the corporate entity that owns all of these different stations and this is where they feel they can make a change and have the best chance at making the most money, which is what they're charged with doing, which is making money. Uh, I, I don't see any, uh, I mean, I, I'm happy to listen to other opinions, but I sadly just don't see that as a, as a reality. If there was a way to make KGO work for them and they are the owners, I mean, they're allowed to do with, with the, whatever they want with the station. If there was a way to make it work for them in whatever way, they would have made it work uh, or they would have tried. Uh, but I one thing we should point out about is that from the community. KGO has not made a profit since Cumulus bought them in 2011. KGO has been in the red the entire time. $20 million lost. I mean, so you've got, you know, but we're going to continue to take a loss because we got a lot of petition signatures. Again, I just, I'm, sadly, I just don't see it as a possibility. Now there's I call an, I call bullshit on that loss, excuse me, mm -hmm. but the entire market, and I have the uh, 
the sheets that they put out last year, the first year, the entire market was projected to be four million. So for uh, KGO to drop twenty is just ludicrous. No, that's no, twenty no, million. Were... That's twenty million since twenty eleven. Oh, right. Since twenty eleven. Okay. Since twenty eleven. Since the company bought the station. They've never turned a profit. But at the beginning, when they moved us to all news in order to compete with KCBS, that's when most of that money was spent. We went into the new digs at Hawthorne. Remember how they did all that remodeling? They spent a freaking fortune on developing that newsroom. And then we moved back to uh, Front Street where they put more money into it. We had a full news team. They had, there were lots of people, and it was a losing proposition from the beginning. The first big meeting we had with Mary Berner, um, I was complaining about them not putting money into KGO, and she said, do you know how much money we spent? And I told her, I know you did, but you spent it in the wrong way. There were bad decisions made. There was money that just went out the window, and now that we're on the right path, you don't want to put any money into us. And that's the problem. Um, they, they did. They lost a shitload of money, but they lost that money because they put it into the wrong thing. They made really bad decisions. <clears throat> they haven't lost that kind of money in the last couple of years, not since we moved back to, um, to talk, to full talk. They did lose a million dollars. They did lose a million dollars last year. The thing we have to keep in mind is all these talk show hosts, all the staff, it costs a lot of money. The station is very expensive to run. So, I mean, I, I was privileged enough to see some numbers. The station was not making money, and I can verify that. The station was losing money. Fabulous producer, John I Daly. do think that the original sin, though, that was referred to by Pat was the 2011 shakeout where they decided to go after KCBS. I mean, that just mm -hmm. seemed like it was a fool's errand. It was so – you took a dominant talk station, and you – that was the huge shakeout of the audience and of, of the, of hosts. And when did, and when did they get rid of all these popular hosts was right around then? Yeah. It was 2011. And Mark, yeah. you know, I was hired like five, four months before that blowout and, you know, watching all these people being a Bay area native that I grew up with and was meeting personally, instead of just as a listener, it was devastating. And, you know, everyone tried their best. They, if everybody remembers, they switched formats from all talk to all news over a weekend. If Cumulus wants to play this card that they invested so much money, they had their head up their ass because they should have at least given people a heads up. Let us prepare. Let us do some PR. All it was was a huge backlash because people were losing these hosts that they loved to go to an all news format for some reason that still blows my mind. And now currently, us losing money, we weren't making money because we didn't have any salespeople selling us. Nobody was selling KGO. They just weren't. So if you don't put anything in marketing, no advertising, and you don't have a salesperson really dedicated, at least one to KGO, what do you expect? Of course well, we're not making money. Nikki, we also have to mention that when Larry came in, he was unaware. I found out and I informed him, that, uh, he would have found out eventually, that KNBR, all the salespeople were working for KNBR and they were, you know, really high up in the rating. So it made it easier for them. But what they were doing was they were selling KNBR and giving for free yep. spots away on KGO. So why would any advertisers pay for KGO if they could get two radio stations um, for and for paying nothing for KGO? Again, we were being set up to fail. And I told Barry, if he wants to make it right, let them sell KGO and give away a spot on KNBR. Oh, no, Pat, we can't do that. Hey, Pat, uh, yeah. I just, before I left uh, the other day when we were all, uh, uh, you know, rift. Uh, I was talking to somebody down the hall, and it's not just KGO that they were uh, lowballing. Uh, they're doing the same thing with the bone. The bone is selling some spots on their air for the same prices my station in a little town of forty thousand in Kansas sells spots for in San Francisco. Well, it is a complex web of financial um, obligations. The thing we need to realize is, you know, this the rights to sports broadcasts. 
49ers, Giants cost millions, millions and millions. Oh, yeah, they cost a fortune. And there are quotas for the salespeople to sell KMBR, which has ratings, which is easier to sell and gets national accounts because they're in the top 10. Um, But it costs, I think, something like five million dollars sometimes for the, the, the sports broadcast rights. So the salespeople have to sell in order just to break even with that. So they're under orders to sell those stations. Well, then they should make that station should be viable without giving away KGO. Yeah, but they, this is the point about uh, with, when it comes to ownership. They have a cluster of stations and the way they sell it. And this happens on the TV side as well with these duopolies that exist in a lot of the big markets. They sell or and, and now with Sinclair and all the way with a whole bunch of stations we will sell you spots both on this station and on these other stations. And we'll throw in KGO to bonus. You end up with these bulk media buys and, and, and that's the easy way to sell. And it's kind of the default way to sell now, I think in the, in the current media environment, again, it's because yeah, I of, wouldn't necessarily yeah. mind if they were selling us it as a cluster, if they were selling us, you know, they, they want to bundle us in some capacity, but then KGO should get something for that. Instead, sure. Our time is taken up. Look at all the commercials we were running all the freaking time. How can you possibly run that many commercials and say we're losing money? Because you're giving the commercials away. So if we're going to be using our airtime in order to play those commercials, surely we should have been compensated something fair for that. But no, we were merely a bonus. We were free. Sometimes those spots were $10. Sometimes they were $1. Sometimes they were $0. Well, something to keep in mind, I came back in 2020, three weeks before the pandemic, um, because I thought it was going to be an exciting year with an election. And from that point forward, I was talking to Lee about digital marketing, bringing, you know, I was brought back to help bring KGO back. And that was Lee Hammer. That was Lee Hammer who cared. But this decision was made above his pay grade. And the decision was to not spend any money. I had direct conversations with our CEO. I emailed her. I talked to her. And she agreed with me that KGO needed to be marketed. And that was all killed in Atlanta. Everything they, it was 100% clear to me from 2020 on, they did not want to spend a dime and they wouldn't. I mean, the amounts of money we we're asking for were nothing. So that decision was made, it was already made, and that's clear to me. I feel like we've talked a lot about the fact that we didn't get to say goodbye and you know what we had what we would have wanted to say, and we haven't really said it yet. And so, I just want to send a message to the listeners. I know a lot of people are, are on this show right now listening to us if i would have been allowed to say what i wanted to say it is that i have loved kgo listeners since i was a little girl listening on a transistor radio to kgo in my grandpa's garden and i have loved interacting with you and i have loved that you've been so loyal and so amazing along the way someone mentioned earlier about the kind of the depth of the listeners i was always amazed that when we were on the air, we could put out a, a call for, hey, if anyone has experience doing thing X, you know, yes. if you're a podiatrist, if you're a rocket scientist, if you're a if you're in wine sales, if you're whatever it was, I don't care what the number showed, there was always somebody listening who knew. There was always somebody listening who was willing to call and wanted to call to share that information. That's what I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss the KGO listeners a lot. And I just wanna tell you that I love you. And thank you for that experience. I'm oh, glad I we loved him. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I hear here. And the thing that impressed me the most about our listeners is that I believe they were well-informed and they were intelligent. Oh, there were the exceptions. <laughs> but they were usually <laughs> I did receive funny. an email from Carl. Yes, Carl's not necessarily, but go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I thought Nikki was speaking. I didn't. I no, didn't I, I'm sorry. That was just that, you know, it's tough to be on with hosts who don't listen to our show, John. Whoever is producing <laughs> this thing. <laughs> In any event, I, I want to um, I, I want to reiterate what Kim said. Our listeners were amazing. They blew me away all the time. They brought new information. They expanded upon information. Um, they were they were well informed. And like Kim said, you know, you ask for somebody, well, what do you know about, I don't know, embalming? <laughs> and I'll be damned if you wouldn't get a mortician. You'd call in and talk with you about uh, embalming. I mean, whatever it was. I, I was shocked one day when I just asked the question kind of randomly, you know, has anybody ever mooned you? 
I swear to God, it was two hours of people calling in and telling stories, not only about being mooned, but about mooning other people. It was utterly hysterical. We just truly had the best audience. And what John Rothman was saying, that's what set us apart. Because yeah. we were the station that had people participate in, live, you know, right in real time, call in, be a part of it. And they did it. They were, and they were fantastic. Nobody else did that. And nobody else is going to do that. They no, also they did it by text to talk about instantaneously. If uh, Pat, you or I said something, there'd be a text within a minute sometimes, <laughs> you know, with the Why correct you answer. Text it? Yeah, no, it's true. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's so true. That really did open up a whole other way to interact because the thing about uh, this format of talk radio is that oftentimes when you take a call, it can go on. First of all, to get a caller on the line, you have to, you know, you need a, a call screener and you need to speak with a caller. It can be a longer kind of exercise, even done very well. And then the call can go on too long or, you know, it goes in some direction you hadn't anticipated and, it, and in a sense hijacks the show texts were a great way to punctuate the show with conversation and with different points that some of which were, you know, many of which I would say most of which were really terrific and allowed you to uh, get to those points without having to get bogged down in, in calls. So I thought that was a great way to augment sort of the existing KGO format and, you know, emails and Twitter and, you know, social media really just uh, opened it up. I, I was so excited to get a show on KGO. I can't tell you it was it may, I told people it's the greatest job of my career. And, um, I, uh, I, I understand this, even though it's so bizarre, especially when I listen to Clark talk about the numbers, uh, it makes you wonder if there just wasn't the, uh, I do think the, the uh, I'm again, thinking out loud a little bit. So you kind of hear it in my halting manner, but I do think that the advertising, world has changed. And as I was saying before, ad supported media has gone through huge changes. And so, you know, television is in trouble too. Television has uh, lost one of their huge, they haven't completely lost it, but it's, it's on, it's being diminished. And that is um, uh, the auto industry. Uh, the car industry really supports so much of television. They're, you know, those, those, <laughs> Commercials wash over us, so we're so used to them by now. But that advertising is taking on different spends, and they're buying media in different places, largely digital. Same thing happened to us first, I would say, in radio and in newspapers. So those spends are taking on a different character. And as that happens, it has become a more difficult media environment. But when I listen to Clark talk about those numbers and those cumes, it makes me wonder if there just wasn't... Uh, if we weren't leaning in hard enough to sales, I just don't know the answer to that though. Well, I'll also say that KGO, um, and just the text lines and the way we were interacting with listeners, show me another radio station that would take as many conservative calls, conservative texts were read on air. You know, I know you were talking earlier, Mark, about, you know, go woke, go broke kind of thing. Um, you know, I feel that even though there was the criticism from some people that we were a liberal echo chamber, I don't ever tune into other conservative radio stations and hear as much counter uh, opinions on there as I've ever heard on KGO. And that's the thing that also worries me about this. We're leading up to the midterms and then the next presidential election. And it just seems that there's going to be such a gaping hole that honestly, we as hosts need to figure out how to fill just to have some sort of pushback on a lot of the nonsense or just that other opinion side of it all and give people a chance to truly debate something. Because again, as we've seen, when you only get one side's opinion all of the time, that becomes your reality. And, and then you can't be convinced of anything else. Yeah, that's a great point. And there are a lot of people on Twitter who are saying this is not coincidental, Mark. The change in format has to do with the political environment. They could have done this with other stations. Why KGO? Because it's generally a liberal slant. I'm getting a lot of that. I just don't know if that's true. I, I really, I usually think that there's, you know, there's one, there's one slant and it's money. And if, you know, if the libs are making money, then they're with the libs. If the right wing's making money, then they're with the right. I mean, it really is that simple there. Uh, I believe in general 
you know, if we were stacking money in the lobby, it would be different. So I know these are tough times. And so it's easier to make a move like this on a huge, powerful station because now you're spending nothing if you're just joining us. I mean, again, this format change cost them, I think, very little. And there is a huge upside, at least. Uh, and, and even if there's a modest upside, it puts you in the black for the first time, potentially. So, Michael Shore, did you want to say something? I, I uh, saw that you, Michael Shore is our political guy who regularly joins us on Fridays. And I see that he's in the uh, forum. But anyway, I throw that out there. If you want to say something, you can see that those who are new to Twitter spaces, you can see, I think it's in the lower right part of your phone. You can request to speak and then we can recognize you and turn your mic on and then you can add to this conversation. That's how it works in this environment. So it's pretty easy, but you just have to. Uh, and then we've got um, Courtney's moderating and she's trying to get everybody who wants to speak uh, an opportunity to speak. So, Hey, Mark, just a quick point on what you're saying about sales. You know, someone who has worked for the successful KGO, uh, what I refer to as KGO Classic, along with John Rothman and some other faces here, Kim McAllister. Um, there are two sides to the house. Pat There's the programming side and Pat. Sorry, Pat. Uh, actually, it was Gene Burns and I that lobbied for you to get hired. So yes, Pat, sorry. Um, uh, there are two sides to the broadcasting house. There's the programming side and there's the business side. It does not matter how good the content is if it's not being sold. And back then, that side of the office was packed with salespeople and they were bringing in the money. So the, your point about making money is important. We were liberal leaning then. It has nothing to do with that. If you look at how many voters in the Bay Area are Democrats. It's, it's nearly half of the population in California, I believe, and a quarter are independents, a quarter are, are Republicans. They had nothing to do with politics. It's 100% the business was not working. Uh, we've tried to recognize a couple of other people who want to speak. I don't, again, I don't have the, who I can call upon. Do I have to call upon them personally or what do I have to hey, do? Before you move on, if I may just add one thing quickly. Uh, I got a script uh, from C. Crane Company. Each week on Thursdays, they send a, a script. No one notified C. Crane Company of the change. Nobody notified Steve Moskowitz of the change. The total disregard for our sponsors uh, was to me absolutely remarkable. And of course, I want to dovetail the thought the election is coming. Uh, and it's going to be a hotly contested election, and we were ready to cover it thoroughly. Pat and I were planning to co-host election night. Uh, that's also a real tragedy for all of us. But I just wanted to throw in, it wasn't just listeners. It wasn't just hosts. It was our sponsors who were treated badly. And uh, that that is the ultimate tragedy for me, that there was no caring, no compassion in terms of the overall approach. Uh, on Twitter, uh, we're at Mark T live on Twitter. And that's a lot of people are uh, throwing, <laughs> I'll give somebody credit for the first joke <laughs> through it all. Um, Tommy Godlove on, uh, on Twitter, uh, writes, uh, Here is a tweet yeah. from mother Teresa. Did they at least pay you for the full show, Mark? That was good. Okay. Thank you very much, Tommy. But, uh, I, <laughs> yeah, that is good. And the first joke of the, uh, okay. Thank you for the smatter. Um, a little I also I also want to mention that once we've recognized you as a speaker because you've asked to speak, then you have to just uh, you have to just unmute your mic and speak. Isn't that right? Isn't that the way it works? Yeah, you can then speak once you've been recognized. So hey, this, just, this you can identify, is, just identify this thing, yourself before you start. It, it's Michael Snyder. This thing is very user friendly. Uh, and uh, hey, uh, long time listener, first time caller, Mark. Uh -huh. And okay. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. It comes and goes on a rainbow. Yes, Michael, go ahead. Hey, if only. Uh, you know, I'm curious, uh, speaking of the economics of the situation, uh, the current format that they've shoehorned in here um, has been uh, also uh, jammed onto the airwaves in Providence, Rhode Island. This is the, that was the test space for uh, Cumulus to convert a pre-existing format into whatever this sports betting thing is. I'm curious on one hand, uh, how that's doing economically. And on the other hand, I'm thinking to myself, well, uh, since there were so many ad giveaways on KGO, uh, maybe they said, hmm, who's got a lot of money? Well, FanDuel 
and uh, DraftKings and MGM one-line betting. Uh, this is probably thought of by the head honchos at Cumulus as a no-brainer and a cash cow uh, with the conversion to this particular format. Um, and that kind of, that's sad to me. I think that's exactly right. I mean, I think that that identifies, as you say, sort of the, uh, the beta testing that was required for this format. And now you're seeing it, uh, and should the props not pass, that'll be the interesting place that KGO will find itself. It's not going to be called KGO anymore. What is it going to be called? The spread or something? The spread. Um, and isn't that interesting? The spread? Because what did they tell you guys? Uh, may I tell you, my understanding is they do not own KGO as a letters. That is still owned by Disney. And my understanding, which I got very back channel, is the Disney people said, we don't want you to use KGO and we own it. So that's the reason why they've had to make the change. Well, it's an FCC uh, signed um, license, and I was told by our general manager that they were keeping the call letters. Okay, that's, the FCC that's what they said in the to, meeting too. Yeah, they have to, the license. So unless the license is challenged, uh, they keep the call letters. Okay, two conflicting stories. Well, well I, don't I, know I can right. I can add a little uh, insight into that, John. Uh, that's Clark Reed. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Clark Reed again. I'm sorry, and that is yes, Cumulus has the call letters. They go with the license. But what Disney's talking about and that John is bringing up is Disney owns the intellectual property KGO. Oh, excellent. Thank you. That's how they can that, assert that control. That clarifies nothing, Clark. What does that oh, mean? Oh, of course it does. <laughs> I don't get it. What Very, good. Very good. I think it probably means they can't use those call letters for marketing. Yeah. They, they, you know, that, that means that KGO can continue to identify as KGO at the top of the hour legally with the FCC, but if they try to do any marketing as KGO, Disney can put the kibosh on it. No kidding. And why did Disney decide that? Did they Who want knows? us back? <laughs> can Disney. we all go to Disneyland? Yeah. Oh, they don't want to be associated no. with gambling. All, yeah, that's it. All I heard oh. was there was deep distress and that the legal people were looking into this fact. I can't assert whether it's true or not. I'm just raising it as another point because people need to consider there are a lot of ramifications yet to be felt. Can I, I, I want to insert something here that is impressive to me. I'm seeing some great people who have, you know, are listening to this. Sandra Furpo, you know, one of the most magnificent employees that KGO ever had. Brett Burkhart, who all of us are missing. Uh, Brian Pelletier is joining us. Alex Stone is here. I mean, I can't do all of them, Karen Reed, but there are just so many people who are participating in this. And it, it I'm, it's so gratifying because I love you all. And, and I, I mean that from the bottom of my soul, every person I've worked with, I feel like there's such an enormous loss right now. And the listeners that we got to know too. I just, I love you all. I miss you. I feel right now like I'm in mourning. Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly how I feel, Pat. And I love you. And I'm so glad that so many people are logged on. And and that's the, I think, in addition to mourning and being sad and just trying to decompress and, and flip my mind into this new reality, it's how do we, you know, and I know we talked about this at the beginning a lot, but it's just I want to keep up the relationships, not just with, you know, obviously the hosts and everyone we worked with who are amazing and amazing people we were able to work with and talk with, but the listeners. And, you know, I, I love getting the tweets and the uh, direct messages and the Facebook messages and things like that. I love hearing their voices. I loved, you know, hearing the emotion or the passion or whatever they were feeling about a topic. And I, it's just um, it's just really hard to wrap your mind around. Yeah, I mean, I think we all are on some level feeling you know, bereft and the audience is something that we feel connected uh, to as a whole, but also individually. You know, I get these emails, even the what I would call sort of trollish emails. I'm so used to them now. And people who are, uh, you know, just dogged in trying to uh, essentially troll me because they call me a lib or a, whatever it might be. You're talking but about there are others who. <laughs> that's, I mean, he's already hey, he got his one mention for this, but I, I also think that there are so many that we know by name. You know that we and we know you by name because you've interacted so many times. And 
And there are others, part of this conversation, which is such a, a luxury to hear those who have such a rich history with KGO. I mean, I, you know, I've only been with KGO as a host on the air for three and a half years, I think it is. But I mean, I used to listen to KGO for years in the truly great days um, when I was first in San Francisco in the 80s. And, you know, Ron was dominant and you had Jim Eason and you had, you know, Rosie and Ed and, you know, Dunbar and all of them. Uh, and then to see the station go through these changes, but then finally to be able to interact and connect with the audience is a spectacular thing. And then to have it go away so quickly and it seems, it, it feels ruthless. You know, it, it happened, I would say, and this is why the emotion is so tough. It happened ruthlessly from the standpoint, from our standpoint, you understand, we had no warning. And so that just makes it that much harder. But when you look at that history, to which I've just referred, I, I uh, I just think this has been such a significant part of the community and our connection with the community and individual listeners uh, has been, uh, you know, irreplaceable. So, Hey, Mark, I should point out that just two weeks ago, Saturday, we had a reunion of old time KGO people who worked under Mickey Luckoff. There were about a hundred of us present, uh, all the names that you would know including Lloyd Lindsay Young and Rosie Allen, and we, we were all there. And it was wonderful. And I kept thinking to myself, thank God it happened two weeks ago Saturday. Otherwise, our reunion would have been <laughs> awake. And when you talk about a funeral, because I've been through this before. I did this in 2011. Uh, all I can say is it is like going to your own funeral. And it is fascinating to hear the eulogies that are being uttered over all of us. But uh, we have to uh, persevere and know that we'll go through the period of mourning and then we have to pick ourselves up and get going again. I just don't know where the again is. I'd like you guys to know that I, I tried to swipe some hardware on my way out of the station. What happened is uh, on the exit interview, I, I was leaving. I mean, it was fine. It was pleasant and fine. You know, what are they going to do? We're, we're being laid off. But they have this in the conference room where the meetings happen. They have these little shelves full of awards. And so I saw one. There's a couple that I was uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, they're not, they're not my awards. They were like group awards. But I was, you know, involved in the award. And so I reached up. And I said, I'll just take this with me. And I looked back over my shoulder and Larry and Lee, their mouths kind of dropped open like they thought I was going to steal stuff on my way out. I was just kidding, but I thought that was kind of funny. Good for you. <laughs> you should have taken it. They don't deserve to have it anymore. They're not going to do anything with it, you know? keep it. Honestly, I mean, what are they going to do with it, right? I really can't believe there wasn't an effort to destroy the new carpet. <laughs> Damn it! We missed our opportunity. Oh no! Yeah, yeah the carpet was a big. Uh, there was a big investigation. Yeah. <laughs> Who uh, spilled water? Oh my god! Yeah, that's really. They have really a rough. thing about carpet. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Sandra Furpo. Mark, how are you? You're black and white, clear as crystal. Go ahead, go ahead, Sandra. Uh, I just wanted to say how sorry I am that you are all uh, going through this and to the KGO listeners who are going through this again. Um, one of my uh, one of my many me memories and, and impressions of the amazing listeners of KGO was back in, uh, I believe it was 20, 2000, to the fall of 2000, uh, a young man, a young boy of 10 year olds at the time, Sean Jones, was riding his bicycle and was badly mauled by three pit bulls that had been let loose by an irresponsible owner. And I was working uh, with uh, Pete Wilson on the Pete Wilson show at the time. And so it was a terrible, it was the top news story and it was a terrible news story. It wasn't a talk topic, as you would know, because there's no you know, pro and con to be discussed. It was just a terrible thing. And it was being covered very well by our news department. But at the end of the talk show, the last caller uh, was talking about whatever the topic was. And then she said to, to Pete, she goes, and this terrible story, this poor boy, we need to do something. Anyway, that was the end of the show. I walk back to my desk. By the time I get back to my desk, my phone is ringing off the hook with people offering assistance uh, to the family, 
uh, we didn't know at the time whether or not this this poor boy would su- even survive from his injuries. Um, within 24 hours, the KGO staff uh, and and management at the time uh, had developed a fund. Uh, someone, um, a third party to manage the fund responsibly. So any monies raised would go directly to his medical care because if he survived, it was obvious that he'd have medical issues for the rest of his life. And people began sending us money. And they did that organically because they trusted KGO. And they had developed that that trust, and they knew that KGO would do the right thing uh, before this young man, uh, which we had the privilege to do. And in a month, I want to say over 500000 was raised. I think it went up to a million dollars when all was said and done. And that was because people trusted us to do the right thing. Uh, KGO, uh, after 2011, became very bad at saying goodbyes. Um, you know, we had some fantastic uh, broadcasters who retired, such as Stan Burford, and no real event was planned for him. It was something that we ended up doing. Uh, we learned he had never been to Alcatraz, so we organized a, a trip to Alcatraz. The folks at Alcatraz did a fantastic job, and, and KGO TV ca- covered it. Uh, so we did that completely on our own, the staff uh, in, the, in the station. And, and Ron Owen still hasn't had an official goodbye, and he was a broadcaster on KGO for 45 years. So I don't know what it is, but after 2011, they just had no uh, ability to enjoy and respect the listeners and the work and community importance that KGO has been. If I'm not mistaken, Sandra, one of the things that KGO was known for in terms of charitable works and really connecting with the community was the Leukemia Foundation. So we were involved in everybody who's a longtime KGO listener remembers Ray Dalia Farrow. It is not enough. And, you know, we were big participants of that. I had the opportunity to work with Ray for the leukemia thon one year. And um, when we were sold, I mean, Citadel kept this up. When we were sold a cumulus, they wanted a piece of it. <laughs> they wanted they we were doing this every bit of it was was donated to the search for a cure to the leukemia foundation but the new kgo wanted a piece of it they wanted to take part of the money that listeners were giving for the leukemia foundation uh ultimately you know it just went by the wayside like so much else no, the cure song was an amazing thing that I also had a privilege to, to produce. It was a 24-hour show, and everyone who who worked on it, from the Leukemia Society to KGO TV to KGO Radio, all the talent, gave their time. Uh, even the performers who came to perform gave of their time. The people answering the phones gave their time. And... Uh, raised some uh, some significant funds for the Leukemia Society, uh, well deserved, and um, it was it was a whole heck of a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, uh, but everybody put that work in because of the love of uh, of doing that. Sandra, <laughs> can I quickly point out that the money, very little money, was raised at the reunion, but money that was raised at the reunion was turned over to the Leukemia Society in honor of our years and Spider Cantley's work and Mickey Luckoff's work and Ray Taliaferro's work, all of us who were so deeply involved. So as of two weeks ago, there was a gift made by the KGO alumni, including Sandra Furpo, uh, to the Leukemia Society. And I think that's the thing that people are gonna miss about KGO, um, and especially the KGO of old, like Sandra was talking about, was that when something like a dog mauling happens, and someone makes a quick comment about it, or we hear about a charity that needs work, or, and I know it's not the same thing as the Leukemia Foundation, but we had a segment on the morning show with the San Francisco SPCA, and a, a number of dogs got adopted that we had you know, highlighted on it. And so it's that interaction between the community and what, you know, it's really hyper-local. I mean, it's the things that in our community they need or they want or they need to reach out about and we've had the platform for them. And just on a little side note, I I did my college internship at KGO 
And I remember the dog mauling case because I was in charge of counting and inputting a lot of the checks that had come in. And Sandra is absolutely correct. It was like a waterfall of money that came in from KGO listeners on their own that just sent it in. And she's she's exactly right. It's because they trusted us. And unfortunately, for the final time, uh, Cumulus broke that trust. Uh yeah, I mean, the, the leukemia thon, and well, that was just a part of the DNA of KGO. You know, you'd look forward to it. It was a weird thing that you'd say as a listener. I mean, I never participated. I don't think as a, you know, as a guest or anything, but you as a listener kind of look forward to it. It was one of those weird, I mean, seldom do you look forward to a radio thon, but it was really, uh, it was quite special. And then, as you say, um, the dog mauling and other big stories like that around the Bay Area. I mean, that's what you lose when you give up. Uh, local ownership. And that's happening all over, not just in the Bay Area. It's happening everywhere. Uh, on Twitter, at Mark T. Lives, where I am, and if everybody knows where everybody else is on Twitter as well, if you want to uh, reach us. Um, um, Murphy says... Uh, Here is a tweet from uh, Mother Teresa. Mark, bereft is a ding word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, bereft is a ding word. And this from Mick, pro-voting rights. Mick writes... At Mark T. Live, this is for Pat. Pat, I'll miss you the most. Thank you for your emotion. Isn't that sweet? Um, hey, which one do you use, Mark Thompson? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My mom only listened to Pat. She never listened to anything I worked on. Mm. Um, everyone loves and misses you guys had, from Richard. Your mom um, had great taste, John. <laughs> yeah, your mom was very discerning, John. That's really true. Um, I should say that we only have 30 minutes left. So if you want to say something, I'll try to continue to read some tweets, but we'll recognize you as a speaker. And then you and the text line's to... still working too, Mark, which I'm actually surprised about. But the text line, the old text line, apparently still up and running. So wow. I don't like it that speaker, way. Am I a speaker till you call my name? Well, you have to tell me who you are. Well, I'm Kimberly Baker. I'm a, I'm a listener. Great. Go ahead. I can. Well, my thing is I'm torn between terrible tears and got to see my therapist and laughter that makes me just roll from your tweet from Mother Teresa and all that stuff and all your guys' humor and your all family back to Ron Owens, Dr. Laura. I drove a truck and listened to KGO all day. So many truckers are going to miss. KGO so much for what's the news of traffic and so much are going to miss you as family. And I just want to say, thank you. You oh, know, so were some of my favorite. <laughs> oh yeah. They always have something good. I'm going to shut my mic off now. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. It's so sweet. So we, by the way, um, yes. Chris Merrill is in the uh, room, as is Brett Burkhart, and uh, both are invited to speak. Uh, we've we've extended the you know whatever the technological handshake to them is you know has been extended, so uh, you guys can uh, chime in if you want to. You don't have to, but I'm just saying it, you know you're, it's uh, it's certainly something we'd love to hear from you. Um, the um, what about the podcast you made of programs, Valerie wants to know? Does KGO own them? What happens on that, John? Or do, do you, or will they be made public, she's asking. You know uh, John Daly? Fabulous producer John Daly? Are you aware of I can, producer I can John tell Daly? you, this is Clark, and I can tell you that they are still up at, as of this weekend at, uh, at iHeartRadio's app, uh, even though you can't reach them on the old KGO platform. Um, I, I've been told that they will be removed. I think it's a matter of no one's really paying attention to it. So if you get in through like the back door, like through the pro provider, if you have a link, it'll probably still work, but they're not going to market it. But my understanding is they will be removed and all the links on the, the KJ website doesn't exist anymore. But if you have a way of getting to those links or through another app, they'll probably s stick around for a while until they're just routinely deleted. And they're still on podcast apps, like your Apple right. podcasts yeah. and Stitcher and whatever, they're still there. But they're probably going to disappear. They're probably going to disappear. Yeah, I think that right. I think that's right. I think they just haven't focused on it yet. Justin Smith on Twitter says uh, you should get in touch with Leo Laporte, see if he can help setting up a new digital platform. Several others have suggested uh, various digital platforms. I have already taken a YouTube channel, and I'll give you the 
Um, I'll just post the link rather than give you the, whatever the link is. I'll just give, I'll post it on Twitter and at, maybe HTTP that'll be a place where we... colon backslash. <laughs> exactly. Can you let him finish, sir? Yeah, no, I cannot let him finish. It's, it's on YouTube and it's a, uh, it'll be a, and I'm hoping that on that platform, we can at least, you know, bridge whatever technological time is required to get everybody involved. And then maybe everybody can go off and do whatever they're going to do. But, um, that's my hope. So, um, uh, and, uh, this Twitter spaces podcast is being suggested by Cheryl, by others. Why don't you do this again? Uh, we may do it next Monday again, um, just to try to keep momentum going and kind of uh, steer you toward what everybody is doing. I know that there are already other hosts on the station who are in conversations and I'm hoping that all good things happen to all of these talented colleagues I have, but, um, I'd who's love having to... that conversation. Who is <laughs> <laughs> who is having that conversation? Uh, right. Well, I don't want to say who. Conversation with EDD. Mm. <laughs> That's a great conversation. That's I'd a like terrible conversation. It. I'd like to say, though, just a uh, promotion for the Mark Thompson show that after the show, we'll post a YouTube link and uh, we will be continuing, at least for the time being, on the YouTube platform so you can find it there as well. Yeah. And the thing about uh, the reason that's important just to spend 30 seconds on it is that we need a thousand subscribers in order to go live. So you just need to, to find a thousand subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, would love it if people would subscribe just to help us get to that threshold. And um, it's like the old uh, KJ Radiothon. We need a thousand. So uh, that will help us keep some momentum. And as I say, I'd love to, you know, to whatever extent we can work everybody in who you're listening to. Twitter spaces is dope, says Alex. First time using it. Yeah, it is a good place for us all to convene. As I say, maybe we'll try it again next Monday. Uh, that could turn 10 they could have turned 1050 into the gambling station, Mark, but they know that there is no listenership on 1050, so they wanted to try to leverage the listenership from KGO 810. I'm certain two of the shows, this is from Eric on Twitter, I'm certain two of the shows are likely paying to be on the air, not Jim Rome, but the other two. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, apropos of uh, archiving and uh, not to be too self-aggrandizing, you can hit the ding if you want, Mark. Um, yeah. uh, you can access um, our Culture Blast segments by just uh, scrolling down uh, my particular Twitter feed at Culture Blaster uh, because they're all there and edited down and no commercials, everybody, because why would I subject uh. you to that? Um, <laughs> But uh, there's never been know, anything like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, one more quick note. We're in the last half hour, which is when I usually um, drop by on Fridays or did so in the past. And I just want to use this um, opportunity to, to thank uh, everybody I worked with at KGO uh, and how uh, um, how great everyone was, uh, how warm and welcoming Pat Thurston and Nikki, uh, obviously John Daly, Brett Burkhart, Albert, fresh-faced Albert, and and my dear, dear friend, Mark E.T., uh, and Kim McAllister. You know, you guys are absolutely the best. I've never felt um, more supported and, and welcome in any broadcast uh, platform or format that I've ever uh, been involved with and you're I down just, to five percent battery yeah i just want to thank you all that's all you're down to five percent battery of course i am yeah well you you didn't feel supported when we hit you with that did you when we wrapped you up we wrote hey. we, we, oh, we poor michael comes in with all these reviews and he also has got something to say about the niners and the giants and then we you know we pushed him out like a relative we wanted to leave yeah, I'm not going to say that Tim Seeker got a better deal, Pat, but hey. <laughs> but we love you, Michael. We love you. <laughs> oh, uh, Complaining ain't going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael, look, uh, so much fun with you, and I'm looking forward to continuing some sort of relationship, as I say, on the YouTube platform in the uh, short term and then beyond, maybe on other platforms as well. But thank you for being part of our show uh, on Fridays. It was really quite special. And a lot of people have asked about Friday Fabulous Florida. We hope to continue with that on the YouTube platform. As I say, I'll post the link. And also uh, on other platforms we may grow to. So we have, we have plans, but, you know, again, it all happened quickly. So we don't have all the plans have uh, coalesced, which is a ding word, please. Yeah, but I... Uh, 
I do in the primordial ooze of all of us and primordials of Dingworth, uh, you'll, uh, you'll find that we are planning this YouTube channel where a lot of these things that at least from our standpoint on our show can continue to live. I will help any host from KGO or any person from KGO with anything that I can help with because, uh, I think it's a really great group, special group, and we've all been carved up along the way. And, and I think many, um, much more than I have been carved up too. So, I mean, I'm just talking about the, the loss through the years and the, you know, increase in, in work that's had to be done. And then finally to lose the work completely. Uh, I think these are very difficult times. So I'm happy to help any way I can as well. I want to thank all of the people who have been on KGO and coworkers for being so magic. One of them, uh, Alex Stone, who didn't necessarily work for KGO, but always brought it with the sound. So Alex Stone, if you're still listening, thank you so much for all the, the great stuff you put onto KGO over the years. John, is that Alex, is that drop that? Is that Alex Stone, the one that we have or not? Uh, that's Aaron Katursky, his distinguished Aaron colleague. Katursky, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to play it. Uh, uh, but Alex did go the extra yeah. mile, and if you listen to KGO a lot, you'd probably hear him lock out his, you know, KGO radio. Um, he did that as a special favor to us. Uh, he did not get paid for that, and he would file reports um, for KGO specifically. Um, he's a he's a Bay Area kid and, and grew up in Santa Rosa, and he's a great guy. Oh, and he's a great. Oh, and we also have Jason Nathanson on here, also KGO alum. Oh, Jason. Oh, loved you, Jason. Yeah. Oh, he's an entertainment friends. reporter, oh. also from the Bay Area. Yeah. Jason Nathanson, yeah. And Jason was great on Fridays also on Nikki's show. Yeah, I loved talking with Jason about movies. He was just, you know, all the people that just contributed to the show and did it week in and week out. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, anybody else? To, oh, do, I'm, I'm not looking at the um, great guests like Loretta Lynch, we'll miss hearing from, says Mick. Um, Woohoo! Uh, I've been listening to KGO for over 40 years. I feel like I'm losing part of my family. Um, I do love that Pat and Nikki are coming with the heat this morning. Yeah, they are coming with the heat. It is quite typical of us, yes. Um, thanks for your time, everyone, says Wes. Wes is a supporter and a regular listener on Twitter. Um, please post the YouTube link now, says Joni. Um, I don't have... I can't post it now. I'll post it right after we're done, Joni. Um, now, Mark. Now. I said now. I mean, my God. It's a, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I also bought two new radios and a new tax preparer because of this station. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and Steve Moskowitz can enjoy uh, listening to whatever the station is called now. I know. Why are you yelling? I don't know what, uh. I love you guys, and you saved my life many times, says Thomas Rodriguez. That's so sweet. Um, I'm realizing now how much of my news came from KGO. Tried to find something, anything to keep me informed on the way in the morning. Monterey County. Literally all I can find on the AM dial is Prager University, Hannity, et cetera. It's really troubling. Well, that is, that's from Mojo Jones. Thank you, Mojo. Uh, it is true that the AM dial is dominated by right-wing talk. Radio is dominated by right-wing talk. And I always love that. I think it's a real myth. The, you know, the left-wing media, the, you know, the liberal left media, the mainstream media, which is all left. I mean, the right-wing owns most of the media. Look at all the Sinclair broadcasting stations. And I don't want to make this uh, a whole soapbox like our show, but uh, when we might oh, weigh in do on it. Just like do this. it. No, but the fact is that when you listen to radio, then you're going to be, unfortunately, you're going to have to resign yourself to listening to formats like that. Like I, I think listening to Sean Hannity is like having my head held underwater. I just can't do it. I mean, it's just, uh, it, I, I get anxious and with the misrepresentation of facts and, and everything stated with uh, this uh, certitude, even though the facts are completely fictional. Well, and, and I use Sean Hannity, but I mean, it, it's all of them. You have to um, Fred Flintstone speaking and it, it's a lot easier. It's, what, That's what, what it looks that? like. It looks just like Fred. Yeah, I, I, I truly, um, I understand what, what's happening uh, with radio from the standpoint of politics. You just aren't going to get much diversity of thought. You just aren't. Pat, the, the only difference is that it'd be yabba dabba don't in the case of Hannity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clark. That sounds like our Friday afternoons. <laughs> 
the dad that, jokes. Uh oh, don't start. Just that. saying. Typing in here. Does anybody want to share some some KGO stories in the last few minutes we have left? I loved Sandra's story about KGO being kind of the first GoFundMe, and I had hadn't realized that. So that was a good one. But I just wonder, like, now's the time if you if you had something that stood out to you or meant something to you. Well, I will. Um, but it it's not like Sandra's story that's you know positive listeners you know, responding immediately. I, I love that. I appreciate that. We've seen that with KGO listeners over the years. But one of the things that stand, uh, stands out to me is when we had breaking news stories. Um, it, it, you know, we're talking, I'm talking about specifically local stories. Sometimes I was with Brett Burkhart. Sometimes I was with Kim. Sometimes I was by myself. When, for example, the wildfires, paradise, you know, when things like that happened, the participation of the listeners um, who were calling in to give us eyewitness accounts of what was going on, who were suffering losses and sharing those losses. When there was the, the shooting of Oscar Grant at the Fruitvale Station at BART, the people who were calling in, who, were, um, who had been uh, on BART when that happened, people who were on the platform who were calling in to tell us what they had experienced, people who were calling in to offering various perspectives on what may have happened with Johannes Meserly and why he shot Oscar Grant to death in the back while he was laying on that platform. I mean, it, the participation of the listeners, I, it just can't be overstated, the immense role that they played, not only with the exchange of ideas, but with them actually being almost, you know, reporters on the scenes of these things, telling us what was actually going on at a time we were hungry for, we were craving for actual information. It's, it's, there's nothing comparable to that. There's nothing that can replace that. And that's, that is to the detriment of the entire Bay Area that we've just lost that with Kate. Absolutely. Of and and, that's true. No. and Pat, I also think, you know, and this wasn't during my show, uh, but this was when I was doing news on Chip Franklin's show, just the fun, and I had fun, obviously. We did so many good things, but I remember in the afternoon, the people that would come on KGO, the local comedians that would come walk right down because they were, you know, they were performing that night at the punchline. Local businesses coming in, bringing uh, booze, bringing food, bringing whatever, and just being able to highlight local music, um, all of these things. It was an awesome thing. I mean, I just, uh, I, I, I'm kind of bummed that Chip hasn't uh, joined in, but, you know, it was such a fun time with Heather Haman and and Brian Pelletier and, and Karen Reed. All of us just had so much fun during those years. And it wasn't a show that you often heard. And it was just one of, just one of many memories that I had in my years working at KGO, or I was like, you're not hearing this, not like this, not just so free flowing anywhere else on local radio, and I'm going to miss it. Uh, Michael Shore, who's our regular contributor on Fridays, um, did you have something you wanted to say? We're going to, we've only got a few minutes, and I'm so glad that you uh, decided to uh, stop by this forum. You have to unmute, sir. You, um, you've got to unmute your mic, and then you just speak. No? I see that you want to speak. No? Oh, you just sent me a text. I don't know what the problem is. Okay. Been trying to talk, but shockingly, it isn't working. Okay. Um, Can I speak? I just want to read the rest of this. Let me know how much I loved it. Uh, I want to let you know how much I loved it. And I can't imagine ever having a gig where I talk politics and Niners. <laughs> um, anyway. so okay, now. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Michael Shore. Sorry, I don't know what the problem is. Can I speak as a listener? Please tell us who you are, please. Hi, my name is Denise Minette, and I just want you all to know how much your station and your commentary has meant to me and my family. And furthermore, how much this forum has meant. It, it, it Last week felt like a radio rapture. I mean, everyone just disappeared at one time. And it was so frustrating and so heartbreaking because you all have become part of our family. We have gotten to know you. We have gotten to trust you. You have driven with us long distances. Um, every morning in the car, my children listen to you and it, it spurs dialogue between all of us. So my kids get to go to school smarter. 
because they have listened to the commentary and the callers on your station. And it has been absolutely amazing. I launched an entire career because of Ron Owens's instant guest segment on his, on, you know, on his program. So we're going to miss you incredibly. We're going to follow you wherever you go. You all have been absolutely amazing as individuals and as a group. And we love you. And we are so, so glad that you have given us this opportunity to hear what happened to you and, and to, to talk to us and talk us through this mourning process. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank wow, you. That's such a nice thing. And, and it's, it's intriguing. I mean, she said she started a whole new career because of the, uh, the Ron segment, you know, when he used to put on people instantly. Riley Martin says, uh, will your producer help out on the podcast, Mark? Uh, yeah, I hope. I hope uh, we'll get uh, we'll get John. John's yeah, very busy. John you know, we'll see. Also, um, uh, some of my favorite times were Nikki and Chip, says Cheryl. How about that? Nikki and Chip. Yeah. Um, and Nikki, Nikki's show, I felt, really grew so beautifully and evolved into something I look forward to listening to every day. It really was so special. I, I um, Oh, thank you. Was, hey, yeah. remember, Nikki, we were only going to talk about COVID-19 for three days. <laughs> that was the biggest joke ever. <laughs> and that was the other thing, you know, I mean, this whole thing happening. And I think, John, you were the one that was talking about the timeline of how long this idea of switching to the spread was in the works. But again, you know, we we launched a show a week before COVID. And yeah, John brings up, it was, we were sitting in our boss's office and, oh, we'll only talk about it for a week. And and then we, the world blew up, obviously, but um, we made it work. It was so much fun. But again, to reiterate what I said at the beginning of all of this, I just wish we had more time together. We will. It just won't be on KGO Radio. Yeah, sadly, that's right. Sadly, that's right. And quickly, I, mean, I just we, want to mention beyond working with, you know, Nikki and Pat and John and Chris and Kim and, and Mark and the current clue and Clark and everyone who's here, I got to produce Gene Burns, which like was the best job. No offense, Mark, the best job I've ever had in my life. Um, and it was at the, the height of KGO. And I got to work with Pete Wilson. I got to pr produce uh, Gil Gross. I got to produce Ron Owens. And I got to produce uh, the cure with Sandra Furpo and be part of the magic that was KGO. Um when it was fully funded. And um, I have so many positive memories, um, you know, working uh, in marketing. I worked in engineering. I worked, you know, uh, they used to call me the KGO radio rat. I've been listening since I was five years old. Um, and so KGO means big, means a lot to me. And that's why I came back to try to help turn it around. Um, even though apparently it was futile, um, you know, my heart was in it and I'm going to miss all these people. Well, I mean, you know, the other thing I would just say, because you made me think of this when you say it was futile, it may be a fool's errand and have been futile from a bottom line standpoint. In other words, trying to get the station back in the black or whatever the deal was with whatever diminished sales force. I don't really understand why they couldn't sell the station. If indeed is what Clark noted in the first hour uh, it was true, which is that you had uh, cumes that would have justified some sales. But uh, you know, again, I don't know what the cross currents were in the realities, but what you did do, John, and I think everybody who was left at KGO did was work really hard to make the product. And this sounds like a hack thing to say, but it's just true. I mean, to make the product uh, something that was special. We tried to concentrate on issues that involved the Bay Area, but then also national and international issues, conversations that we didn't feel you'd necessarily hear elsewhere. I mean, I know I worked really hard. This was the front and center thing for my life. And I think I saw that in everybody I was working with at KGO. So uh, even as you talk about the fact that you know, it was all in vain on some level. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I mean, I think we did, we did great shows we can be proud of and those shows stand on their own, you know, and, and it's not a question of where KGO goes from here. I think as we look back, um, we can be proud of what we did. And certainly as you look back on as that history that you just described, you can be probably even prouder of the work you did through all the different iterations and with all of those different hosts. But uh, obviously the future is heartbreaking for us. Everybody on this call and in this forum is heartbroken. Did you, what was it? Did we have anything? Okay. We're trying to get as many people on here at the last second as we can, but yeah, it's a, it comes, this all comes from a, a really, difficult place, but we wanted a forum where everybody could share some feelings and some facts along the way. And when I say futile, I'm only re re referring to the, the business operation of the sales machine that was not in place. Um, the content was excellent. You know, when we launched the morning show, I, I woke up every morning at 4.30 in the morning. I didn't go to bed until 11.30 at night after cutting late night audio comedy clips. My heart was in it. I didn't get paid for any of that. 
and um, I'm really going to miss it. So uh, let me just, I'm being told this by our moderator. Um, the people who uh, are listed as speakers, you can see who you are. Chris Merrill is one of them. Um, uh, is it Scott? Um, uh, Cynthia, I'm just seeing, as I mentioned, I don't know. Anyway, you, if you, you have to just unmute and you're, and you're on because you've already been recognized. Um, that's the way it works for those who are new to this. And I'm fairly new to it myself. I've never been the host of one. That's why I have a ninja moderator working hey. inside. But if anybody wants to say something, just identify yourselves and, and please start. Yeah, Mark, it's, uh, it's Chris Merrill. Um, hey, Chris. Speaking now mostly because you, you said my name and I'm really excited about the shout out. Uh, it's probably the most exciting shout out I've ever received. So thank you yeah. so much for that. Right. The, uh, shout out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say something um, that so many that, that are in the call didn't realize was going on off the air. Uh, and I know this is the same for you as so many other people. One of the great experiences with working at KGO was not necessarily everything that you heard on the air. That's what we worked so hard to do. I mean, just hours after hours and preparing what we were doing and, and, uh, and identifying how we're going to address this, how are we going to make it you know, entertaining and engaging, smart and fun. But sometimes the craziest stuff was after that mic went off. And that's when the, the, the chemistry that you hear between the hosts and the others really gelled. And that really is, is, is a huge part of KGO that I'm going to miss uh, as much as anything else is just that interaction when those mics were off because that was its own therapy uh, for me. So, I, I, you know, to everyone that I worked with off the air, thank you, thank you, thank and you so Kate much. And the Kate Bush bumper music. And I hate your guts for playing that <laughs> over and over again. So, yeah. So, anyway, that's that's what I wanted to say was thanks. That's really nice. Not Chris Merrill, everybody. Know. Come on, yeah. Really cool. That? Chris is a – I think the remarkable thing about Chris is a talent is that he is able to do all of these different shifts, and you, they're not all the same. So he has to, you know, begin to – morph his own you know his essence you know what i mean of who he is as a broadcaster to whatever the shift is i call him the iron man of radio because he does all of this through and 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 works so so well and many times he didn't get any notice he was on standby when you know someone was sick and yeah. they'd be like hey can you work the morning show and can you do john rothman and can you do the morning <laughs> show tomorrow and can you do it with five minutes notice yeah yeah. Sometimes that was just because Lee forgot to tell me that I was filling in one day and I got a phone call from a producer saying, uh, where are you? We're on. What are you doing? Uh, I'm scrambling. That's what I'm doing. And then, uh, you know, we put something together. We made so Mark, yeah, there was an improvisational quality to Chris is a badass <laughs> and he worked really hard. <laughs> oh, thanks, he worked really hard to help us out. Yeah. Hi, this is Terry. Um, I loved working with you, Chris Merrill. Same. Can you hear me mm -hmm. all? Yeah, go Terry. Hi, um, I worked during the golden years uh, of KGO Radio. Um, I came in in 97. I got to work with all the hosts uh, back then. And then when the new generation of hosts came in, I got to work with them as well. And I learned so much from everyone. And I especially want to thank the listeners who were mostly kind to me. There were some that were not so kind, but <laughs> they were great, um, as everyone has a, a, a attested to. And I also... As a producer, I want to thank the experts that came on. Hi. You know, it, it's hard trying this to get This is Debra. Someone... And I... Hello? Hold on, Debra. Debra, hold on one sec, if you would. Thank love. you. Hold on. Uh, it, it's speaking. hard trying thank to get you. someone um, who knows their craft to come on a show in, in a matter of a couple of hours. And uh, many of those people, like Dr. Peter Chin Hong, who um, I would call, and he was just so gracious to come on and talk about... COVID-19, monkeypox, um, whatever we were talking about. He always was updated on the information that our listeners wanted to know. Um, some of the politicians, Pat, uh, uh, Jackie Spear, um, so many other greats that came on. Um, and I also wanted to t thank my team members, my producers, um, John Daly, um, all the, uh, Lynn Sloan, um, all the other people who helped to share information on how to contact others or if you had information on how to, um, if you had an email to reach someone, they were all great. And I just loved all the hosts as well. Uh, Pat, oh. I 
I've loved working with you. You were the best. And I've learned so much from you. And Mark, I enjoyed working with you during fill in. Um, I just had the most wonderful experience at KGO Radio. I loved working with Nikki. Every time I walked in the station, if I felt like I was um, walking into a building where there was family. And I, I really mean that. So thank that's you so all. That's so true. But don't forget uh, David Katz, his wonderful legal David announcer. Katz, that's right. And Sherry Yee. Who Sherry, is, yes, uh, Sherry Yee. Produced. Sherry Yee was amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I, I agree with you. We had so many great coworkers and every Dominic, you know, Dominic Chalupki, uh, who did, uh, you know, some of the production for us and, and teases and things like that. Always ready. ready <laughs> Dominic, let me just mention, because the <laughs> listeners may not know, but you know, Dominic does, as Pat says, work in production. And so you'll hear a live spot or you'll hear the old Ron Owens report or whatever. And he takes what can oftentimes be a less than smooth um, read with a live spot. I'll, I'll use that example just in my, my own case. And, uh, you know, you'll dump it with him. And then literally within six minutes, he'll have turned it into a clean 60 second read. It's unbelievable. really like a magic trick or something. Yeah. And he does this over and over with all these different production elements. And, um, and Craig is in that same uh, boat. I know Craig uh, wanted I was to say join. Uh, he, he's the guy who you hear, you know, with the, uh, um, with all of the different announcements and he does all of those promos that reflect such great creativity. So these are guys, I'm so glad you, we can get them a, a quick mention here before we wrap up. Yeah, they do such good and, work um, right shout now. Shout out to Chip's former producer, Brian Pelletier, who's listening in from the East coast. Uh, <laughs> don't forget we have Albert and Jason who used to Big work with Pat. Out. Yeah. yeah. Can I uh, say one thing? Sure. Go ahead. This is Deborah, longtime listener, Pat and I work together at um, KSRO John, I've been listening to you since I was 23. I'm 62. And I, sorry, I'm going to cry. I feel like I'm losing family. Like every day you guys were with me. And I, I can remember so many things that I, I, like when the space shuttle blew up, like 9-11, like all, all the things that marked my life as, as so poignant. And to think that you're not going to be there on a daily basis is so heartbreaking. I'm sorry, Deborah. I'm so sorry. Thank you for listening for so many years and for being with us. You are like family. Exactly. Thank you for being part of the KGO family, Deborah. And Deborah, we all feel the same way. It's shattering and we love all of you. And uh, I want to thank Mark Thompson for putting this together today. Mark, thank you so very much. Here, here. You know, thank you, guys. I'm glad we finally got it around to me because uh, it's a very, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, you don't want to stray exactly too far away from Mark. <laughs> no, but I, I um, it, it is heartbreaking. And this has been uh, very, very difficult. And there's so many who have weighed in on Twitter. And I'm going to go through these uh, messages as all of us can. And um, I'll read more. You can interact on Twitter. I'll post on Twitter the YouTube channel that, we're launching. We need a thousand subscribers so that we can get uh, on live and we'll do a live broadcast. And we're also working on ways that you can text, that you can uh, call. And so we'll try to replicate a little bit of KGO, but everybody, um, all the hosts are, I think, having conversations and the same a flavor of conversation about what to do next is being had by all of us. And I'm hoping that, um, that we'll all be in places where you can find us. We'd love to be together. I think it's a really great team, actually. Um, I don't know that that'll be possible, but I'd love that you'd be able to hear all of us somewhere. Well, how long does unemployment run for? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think this has you been- You get no nothing. nothing. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, this has been very tough, really tough. So um, I guess we have to wrap up. I um uh, I want to thank everybody who participated and those who were for whatever reason I think there've been some technical barriers for those who've never used it before or maybe uh, uh, for whatever reason I don't think we got everybody on but uh, yeah everybody who's been such a great part of the KGO history thank you so much for participating for listening in uh, the loss of KGO radio is a uh, is a massive one it can't be overstated and I think you got a flavor for that. Uh, specifically today from so many. Um, anybody closing comments? I don't want to uh, dominate necessarily, but if anybody else wants to say anything, I, just, I, I yield I just want to say yeah. thank you 
Thank you. Thank you to everyone that has reached out. Um, and I know Mark has alluded to this, uh, maybe a YouTube live or something. Um, I know I am committed to being out there and I would love it if it could be some sort of iteration of this crew right here. Um, and I think that that's all it's going to take in addition to the support from the listeners. But no matter what way it is, I truly believe it is going to happen. Uh, but we just have to mourn what was and, and look towards the future. But again, from the bottom of my heart to everyone I worked with and talked with, thank you, thank you, thank you for making one of my biggest dreams come true. I love you all, and we will talk again soon. Love you, Mickey. Out of time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So sweet. Thanks, everybody. Watch this space. We may do this again sometime soon, maybe next Monday, and definitely we will live again on another platform. We will miss KGO desperately, and we'll miss all of you along the way as well. Thank you. Is there anything in particular you would like to hear, Your Highness? Four, three, two, uno. Yes, I'm very unhappy with everything I've heard today on your show. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Joe Box and Little Anthony. Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. What he's got going here is a situation. That's them things. Behind movie scenes, behind movie scenes. I have a busy week. Dali She's the one that keeps the dream alive. From the morning past the evening to the end of the life. What can you tell us about the scene? That you're on the 45. Well, it's grim. We've never seen anything like it before. Nobody has ever put something like this together that I've ever seen. I have never heard of something like that. There is nothing in our history that quite compares to this. Have you ever seen anything like this? There's never been anything like this. Behind movie scenes, behind those movie screens. Asher Bosley. Why are you yelling? She's the one who keeps the dream alive. From the morning past the evening to the end of the life. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. 45, well, it's a grim through Asher on the 45. Can you let him finish, sir? You do not know what you are talking about. You just don't get it, do you? You don't. It's fantastic. The science is ridiculous. Illuminate the main street from the cinema aisle. Don't care about no government warning about that promotion of the civil life of the damn death. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for. And I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week.